Hey everyone, I want to give you some ways to remember those regional terms in anatomy, which are those proper terms you use for various parts of the body. First, there are two major regions of the body, the axial region and the appendicular region. The axial region is going to cover the head, neck, and trunk. And a way you can remember this is that it begins with axe. Why do people use an axe? To cut down a tree trunk. So you know that's the whole trunk, head, and neck region. Next, you have the appendicular region, which includes the upper and lower limbs. And again, that's what an appendage is. It's something that attaches or comes off of another structure. Now let's take a look at some of those areas found within the axial region starting with the head. The word cephalic refers to your entire head region and if you look at the word you'll notice it starts with the C and ends with the lick. Now which region of the body has structures that allow you to see and lick? The head. Next we have cranial which refers to the skull and this one's pretty easy because cranial, brainial kind of rhymes and that's what the cranium does. It houses the brain. Next, you have the frontal region, which is this area right here on your forehead. And that's pretty simple to remember because another word for front is fore, and it's your forehead or front of your head. Next, you have the ocular region, which refers to the region of your eyes, and you use binoculars to look at things with your ocular region. Next, you have otic, which refers to the ear region. And if you ever have an earache, you'll probably go to a doctor where they will use a device called an otoscope to inspect your otic area. Next you have the nasal region which of course is the region of the nose. That's why you take nasal spray and squirt it up your nose. Next we have the buccal region which is the area of the cheeks and we have a video on how to administer medication via the buccal route and how do you do that? You place it on the inside of the cheek. Next we have the oral region which of course is talking about your mouth. So if your doctor tells you to take medication orally they mean for you to take it by mouth. Next, we have the mental region, which refers to the area of the chin. And if you remember that men tend to have a bigger chin, then you'll remember that mental means chin. Next, you have the occipital region, which is at the back or base of the skull. Interestingly, you also have an occipital lobe of the brain back there and an occipital bone of the skull. So are you seeing how this is all interconnected? Do you see how anatomy just connects the dots of life? Uh, neither do I, but hopefully that'll help you remember. Okay, so that wraps up the major regions of the head. What about the neck? The neck is referred to as the cervical region, and that's what that word cervical means. It means neck. And wouldn't you know, you actually have vertebrae there, which are called the cervical vertebrae, or the cervical spine. Now let's move down to the trunk, where we have the thoracic region. This is the region between the neck and the abdomen. If you remember back from school when you studied insects, they have the thorax. Well, we have a thorax to it's that region and you actually have vertebrae there also called the thoracic vertebrae that's a thoracic part of your spine the axillary region refers to your armpit region that's why they make axe deodorant it's axe with an e for your axillary next we have the mammary region which refers to that breast region where we have mammary glands and in females they become active after pregnancy and they can produce milk which is where we get the name mammals, by the way. It's because we breastfeed our young. Now, in between that mammary region, you have the sternal region, which is named after that sternum bone, which looks a lot like a necktie, actually. Okay, moving down, we have the abdominal region. And most of you know where your abs are located, so this should be pretty easy to remember. But did you know that the abdominal region can also be divided up into either four quadrants or nine abdominal regions. I have an anatomy video on that if you want to dig a little deeper. Next, you have your umbilical region, which is the area at the navel or belly button where your umbilical cord attached when you're in the womb. Moving a little further down, we have the pelvic region, which is that region between the hip bones. And always remember that Elvis used to shake his pelvis. Inferior to that region is the inguinal region, which is where you can have those inguinal hernias, where your intestines literally poke through your abdominal wall and pooch out. Next, you have your pubic region, which just refers to your external genitalia area, where you develop pubic hair at puberty. Next, you have the perineal region, which is that region between the genitalia and the anus. And nurses will actually perform something called pericare, where they will clean and care for this area. Just remember that you always want to wipe from front to back, from the genitals to the anus. You don't want to wipe from the anus to the genitalia. That would be bad.
On the posterior side of the trunk, there are some additional terms you'll want to know. For example, you have the dorsal region. What's that? Well, that's just the area of the back. If you think about a dolphin, it has something called a dorsal fin on its back. And you also have a dorsal cavity, which is the cavity towards your back. And you also have the vertebral region, which is that area that runs along your spine. Those bones there are called vertebrae. And next you have the lumbar region, which is your lower back, better known as your loins. And you know, you always see those cheesy chair commercials saying, do you suffer from lower back pain? Our chair offers lumbar support which simply means it supports your lower back. You also have the sacral region, which is that area of the lower back where your sacrum bone is located, by the way. And it's called sacrum because some cultures believe that the human soul resides within that bone. And then finally, there's the gluteal region, which is that area of your buttocks. And those muscles in there are called your glutes. So we all have a glutey booty. So those are some of the areas you'll want to know within the axial region. Now let's shift gears and look at the appendicular region. And we'll start at the upper arm where there's a little bony part of your shoulder called the acromial region. You'll sometimes see acrobats stand on the acromial region of other acrobats. Next, we have the brachial region, which refers to the arm, where all those muscles there, you have biceps, brachii, triceps, brachii, the brachialis. Okay, anatomist, we get it. Brachial means arm. Now, the region at the front of the elbow here is referred to as the antecubital region. And the prefix anti can mean in front of, and cubital refers to elbow, so it literally just means in front of the elbow. And instead of calling it antecubital, a lot of nurses think they're real cool by just calling it the AC. They'll be like, I just started an 18 gauge in that patient's AC. Next, we have the olecranal region, which is that part on the back of the elbow where the olecranon is at the proximal part of the ulna. And did you notice how during the pandemic people stopped shaking hands and instead they started doing that elbow bump? I'm officially going to name this move right here the olecranal bump. Now the forearm region here is referred to as the antibrachial region. By the way, a huge mistake a lot of people make in anatomy is they think this is the arm right here. This is not the arm. In anatomy, the arm is from here to here. This is the forearm from here to here. Next, we have the carpal region, which refers to your whole wrist area. People often confuse carpal region and the tarsal region. Just remember your carpals help you drive a car and your tarsal region is closer to your toes. Next, we have the manual region, which refers to that entire region of your hands. So if you're gonna do manual labor, you're gonna be using your hands. Now your metacarpal region is just beyond the carpals. That's what the prefix meta means. It means beyond. And your palm is also referred to as the palmer region. And you should never ever miss that one on a test. It literally has the word palm in it. The region of the thumb is referred to as the pollux region. So if you find this video helpful, please give it a pollux up. And then finally, you have the digital region, which just refers to your fingers, which you can use right now to click that subscribe button. Now let's talk about the lower limbs, starting with the coxal region. Now I like to think of a cowboy grabbing his gun and cocking it at the coxal region. Next, you have the femoral region, which is that whole region of your thigh, where you have the femur bone, you have the femoral artery running down. You even have muscles called the quadriceps femoris. Again, do you see how the dots are being connected in anatomy? Do you feel the love? Next, we have the patellar region, which refers to the front of your knee. That's what the bone right there on your kneecap is called. It's called the patella. Now, on the back side of your knee, you have the popliteal area, and you have to bend your popliteal if you want to pop a squat. Next, we have the crural region, which is that front area of your leg from the knee down to the ankle. And a simple way you can remember this is just remember the game of cricket. They wear these pads that cover their crural region. Now the back of the leg where the calf muscle is is called the sural region. Next we have the pedal region. And the pedal region just refers to your foot. What part of your body do you use to pedal a bicycle? The pedal region. Again, anatomists are giving that one to you. Next you have the calcaneal region, which just refers to the region of your heel. And I tend to get calluses on my heel sometimes. So I think callus, heel, calcaneal, boom. Then you have the tarsal region, which is that whole ankle region. And again, keep that straight from the carpal region. Carpals drive a car, tarsals are closer to your toes. Now your metatarsal region is that area just beyond the tarsals. That's what meta means, beyond. Now your hallux is just a region of your big toe. And remember, the pollux was the thumb, the hallux is the toe. How do you remember? Well, you use your hallux to walk down the hall. 
And just like the fingers, the toes are also referred to as your digital region, which is pretty easy to remember. And finally, we have the plantar region, which is the region of the sole of the foot. And if you've ever had a plantar wart, that's where it's gonna be located. They're ugly, they're nasty, you don't want one. Okay, that wraps up this video over some of the major regional terms of anatomy. Hope this video helped you out. You can take a free quiz by clicking the link in the description below. We also have a whole playlist full of anatomy videos. Thank you so much for watching.